Um, I actually started in the healthcare field um, when I was really young. I was a teenager, started out as candy striping, and then worked in the lab, uh, started phlebotomy, went on to college. And um, that's kind of how my healthcare care um, started. Um, when I got out of college, I went straight to the laboratory. And then once um, I decided I wanted to get more into the administrative field, more uh, rather than being in clinical, um, then that's the that is when I actually chose to go into medical coding uh, as a career. So every day you're wondering, well, how does Licking County know that we have 1,400 cases of COVID today? Well, what happens is when you go into the doctor's office and they actually do that test on you, they will submit it with a certain code and then your job is to go and read the guidelines, make sure it matches, and then you'll input it into the, um, the practice management system. And when at the end of the day, they push that button, it's released, it goes to the insurance company. All of those statistics go in by county and that's how they do their counts. So you know how many patients uh, we could say are, um, influenza A, how many uh, patients we have with influenza B. So this coding program is actually teaching you uh, the government guidelines along with payers, along with Medicare and Medicaid. And then you are also uh, reading the guidelines with the World Health Organization and the American Medical Association and assigning codes depending on what the physician's documentation says. Like I said, we do uh, a medical terminology, we do anatomy. Uh, we also do a lot of reading, locating information. Uh, we practice a lot on electronic health records, locating documentation. Uh, when it comes to medical coding, you do have to be very, um, very interested in healthcare. Okay. And so you do do a lot of reading. I was someone in the past who hated to read. And it was amazing because I had such a love for medicine that when I started reading about it, I could read about it all day. The other thing, you have to be very detail oriented. And you also have to have some good math skills. Um, you also have to have, um, I would say a great um, grasp of, a lot of people are black and white when they do their thinking process, but with coding, you have to think outside of the box a lot. Like it's just not black and white. Okay. There's a lot of areas that are very gray. is we'll actually do the workbook, okay? When we get into the workbook, we'll review the homework from the lecture path, the one, the lecture that we had uh, at during the last class. After that, we'll actually take a test, again, from the lecture that we had in the last class. Um, usually, uh, we will go on break for just a few minutes to kind of clear ahead, because we're moving to a whole different body system. And then we'll come back and have a couple hours lecture. We do a lot of one-on-one -on -one practice, a lot of one-on-one -on -one cases. We go through a, um, different guidelines, do some reading, but the best part, and this is what the class really loves, is getting those uh, examples and actually trying to do things on their own. So we do a lot of case scenarios uh, in the classroom setting. It is the AAPC, which is the American Association of Professional Coders, okay? And you will get a certified professional coding. You will start out with an apprenticeship and then with experience, you'll have that A removed. But this is something that it's not 
state certification, it is nationwide. So once you're certified, you can travel anywhere with it. The class that I actually teach is outpatient coding. So I'm mostly teaching my class to code for eight, um, outpatient facilities, emergency rooms, clinics, physician offices, uh, outpatient surgical centers, um, urgent cares. So anything outpatient status, laboratories, radiology, um, this class is geared you know, towards that outpatient career. And they have um, just a lot of different facilities that they would be eligible to work for in their coding department. But also what I like to let people know is you're not gonna work from home up front. You gotta have at least, I've had people go home in six months. I've had people go home in three weeks. I mean, it just depends on your individual growth and what their expect, expectations are. Uh, we do have some that are uh, more strict, they're uh, harder uh, cases to actually code. So uh, there might be an average of six months to a year that you would have to be on campus to be trained and then released after that. Not currently, uh, actually I have uh, a couple calls this week actually asking for coders that may be available. Uh, again, I kind of like, it's kind of like spring cleaning. In the spring, they like everybody goes out and finds a different job and then they all have got different jobs or someone's opening a new business. And then come January, they're like, do you have a couple more coders? And I'm like, well, I'm just now starting out. So I usually have two or three that's still hanging out there, but um, actually it's a really good job profession and, and they've done really well with keeping um, us informed when they have openings. Starting pay locally is around 16 to $17 an hour. Uh, as you head towards Columbus, uh, you can make up to like 20 some dollars an hour. Again, you have to realize you have gas and food and clothes and things like that. But once you get in that at home status, which is really nice, then you don't have that cost anymore. And that, that pay range is really nice. Class meets um, September through December. They would do an online class for medical terminology and anatomy. Uh, this is for the part-time program. January through June, we would meet twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays. It would be from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. or we have a class from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Okay. I advise anyone interested in the program to go to the CTEC website, put in their information, uh, that they're interested in the medical coding specialist program. Uh, after that uh, point, they would be registered for the work keys testing. Um, so they can actually do that online as well. According to their work schedule or their school schedule, they can sign up to take the work keys testing. And uh, after that point, they definitely would want to make sure that they meet with me so I can answer any questions that they may have. Uh, usually when I meet with the students, I like to give them a copy of the syllabus, show them the books, show them the schedule, uh, what my expectations are for them in the program, 